Okay. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, so we're going to go to Baltimore County, Maryland. First of all, this is our office manager um, at Jones Geological Services. Her name is Tigger, and uh, she kind of rules the roost. Um, so uh, if you ever call, she'll answer the phone. <laughs> Not really. Uh, you know, Baltimore County, we wish that uh, they had some uh, spectacle uh, views like this. Uh, of course, not Maryland sites. Uh, the top right one is actually a, uh, a gypsum cave down in uh, Mexico that they found uh, not too many years ago. There is a, a human for a scale uh, right there. The other picture is the Rainbow Mountains over in China. And uh, that is true color i will let you know and it's true true color so uh ever go to china uh make sure you visit rainbow mountain okay so uh this is what we're going to be talking about tonight for baltimore county rocks mineral resources fossils a little geologic history and a little bit of what's called the coastal plain and uh talking about that um you know, the black writing is not a good thing for you to try to be reading, uh, but we break the country up into what we call physiographic provinces uh, based on uh, landforms, valleys, drainage, vegetation, even rock types, uh, elevations, and uh, we can put, I'm going to show you a closer picture of Maryland next, but uh, like, for example, the 24, that's called the Valley and Ridge Province known as the Appalachian Mountains and the Great Valley, for example. And number two, if you can't read this, the Appalachian Plateau uh, sort of going on. And the number four, the green areas, is the uh, Blue Ridge. Now, none of these are in Baltimore County. I'm just picking them out on the map so you can see them. So uh, uh, the whole country has been broken into what we call physiographic provinces. And many of these provinces have been broken into sections uh, on the same characteristics. So here's the Maryland map. And Baltimore County is where the green X is here. So you see that uh, Baltimore County is located within the Piedmont. Um, they call it the Piedmont Plateau in Maryland. And then you actually uh, you go, it goes around the uh, city of Baltimore. And it hits a little bit of what's called the coastal plain, which is where the orange area is. And we're going to talk about, talk about this red line at the end. That's called the fall line. Uh, we'll talk more about what that is uh, at the end of the, of the program. So Baltimore County is located within the Piedmont uh, province and a little bit of coastal plain to the south. So again, if you project the Piedmont into Pennsylvania, you're coming into uh, actually Adams, York, Lancaster, Chester counties along the line. So uh, would you expect to have the same type of rocks? Uh, and the answer is yes. So geologically, this is what this is what you uh, you would see in uh, in Baltimore County here. Uh, this color is the Precambrian rocks. They have it Precambrian with a question mark. Uh, so it's very, very old rock. And you actually will see what this is called the uh, Baltimore Nice or the uh, the dome. We call it because it's shaped like a dome. And you see the color says it's a Precambrian basement complex. Rocks that are over 1 billion, that's a B, 1 billion years old in uh, in the southern third of Baltimore County. Talk more about that here in just a bit too. Um, so, as in most areas, uh, our infrastructure is laid out uh, and highly influenced by the geology of the area. Uh, certainly, where you have mountains, uh, you don't really have um, towns on on the mountains or even ridges. Most of the 
most of the uh, no age of the towns are in valleys sort of thing. Interstate 83 running right down through the middle of Baltimore County. If you drive Interstate 83, you know that there's very little flat land on 83. You're either going up or you're going down. Um, and that's because that's the way that the Piedmont is in this part. Uh, watersheds, of course, uh, there's a number of watersheds in Baltimore County. Uh, one of the more famous ones to uh, people know about the Pretty Boy, Pretty Boy Reservoir area over here in the northwestern corner of Baltimore County. Beautiful lake and surroundings that you can hike around and sort of thing. But uh, there's a number of uh, watersheds uh, that are going into the Chesapeake Bay, uh, basically all in Baltimore County. Everything's heading to the bay. So, as I said, we're going to do some basic uh, earth science uh, along the way. So, uh, you have seen this diagram before. It's called the rock cycle, where um, basically uh, we believe everything was magma. 4.6 billion years ago or so, the magma cooled, turned into igneous rock, which started to shape our earth, and then weather and erosion uh, er eroded the uh, rock into small pieces called sediment. That was brought into maybe streams, rivers, hillsides. It was glued together, lithification into sedimentary rocks in some kind of water environment. It could have been the ocean, uh, Everglades, uh, things like that. And then heat and pressure changed that rock into metamorphic rocks. And by theory, at subduction zones primarily, metamorphic rocks get hot enough to melt back to magma. So that's the complete cycle. Uh, igneous rocks can actually be metamorphosed directly and go right over to metamorphic rocks. And so some of these rocks in Baltimore County took that route, actually. Uh, of course, metamorphic rocks can weather and erode, right, come back over to here and start all over again. Sedimentary rocks can be weathered and, and, weathered and eroded. Uh, so there are sub cycles within the big cycle sort of thing. Uh, abundance in the crust, just for your information. Uh, if you look at the entire crust, 65% of the rocks in the crust are igneous, 9% are sedimentary, and 26% and are metamorphic. That's in the crust. Now, on the surface, if you were to do a, a worldwide scan, 95% of rocks on the surface are sedimentary. So if you go someplace on a vacation and you pick up a rock, uh, you're 95% sure it's going to be a sedimentary rock. Okay. Igneous rocks are 5%, and less than 1% of all rocks on the Earth's crust uh, surface are metamorphic. So, uh, in reality, metamorphic rocks are kind of rare when you look at the entire Earth's uh, averages. So, in igneous rocks, they can be divided into two groups. One's called the intrusive Igneous rocks, they have the larger crystals. You can actually see crystals in a rock. You think I'm thinking about a rock called granite. And then you have the extrusive igneous rocks that were actually lava. And they cooled rather quickly. And they uh, formed small crystals. You can't see real crystals in a, a rock like basalt. Or you've heard us talk about the uh, igneous rock called rhyolite. Uh, out of South Mountain. Uh, so, uh, Baltimore County basically has uh, intrusive igneous rocks, as you're going to find out. Uh, although it does have a little bit of volcanic rock, not in Baltimore County. This is actually in Cecil County, Maryland. I'm cheating here a little bit. Uh, this is the Susquehanna River, uh, Route 40 bridge going across the Susquehanna River right there. And on the uh, Cecil County side, which is the east side, you do have uh, volcanic rocks exposed along the Susquehanna River. So uh, there were volcanic rocks. You'll see how these kind of fit in uh, at the very, very end of our show. And if you go into Cecil County again, I'm 
I'm getting away from Baltimore, but this is a little extra uh, information. A place called Gilpin Falls uh, in Cecil County. This historical covered bridge. Uh, actually, the rock outcrop along the stream down to the right is all basalt. And it was formed uh, in the ocean as a as a um, mid oceanic ridge uh, deposit. And uh, there's some neat features to prove that if you would actually go to Gilpin Falls and see the rock, which looks like this actually. Uh, I see the word pillow lava. Uh, these are pillows. Uh, the basalt uh, flowed into water after being extruded off the ocean bottom. And it kind of uh, made into what we call structures called pillows. Uh, if you can, this is a pillow, that's a pillow, that's a pillow, everything's a pillow. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, um, it tells us that this was extruded in water, very similar to what's happening today in Hawaii. So Gilpin Falls, uh, Cecil County, neat little geologic uh, stop if you're heading that way. Uh, port deposit granite. And there's a, there is port deposit granite in Baltimore County. However, port, port deposit granite is obviously named from a, a place, again, in Cecil County called Port Deposit, right along the Susquehanna River. It's a famous building stone. It actually was a granite, and it was metamorphosed. Remember the uh, rock cycle from igneous over to metamorphic? Uh, so this is a, a kind of now called a granodiorite is the metamorphic equivalent of what uh, it is today. But it's kind of a pretty uh, pretty rock, uh, great for building stone. Here's the uh, town hall in Port Deposit made out of Cockeysville, I'm sorry, the Port Deposit granite. Uh, and you'll, if you, if you walk Baltimore, uh, you'll find that there's a number of buildings made out of the Port Deposit granite. Uh, and I said this, this is also exposed in Baltimore County, but not quite as famous as what it is here at Port Deposit. Um, in Baltimore County, there's also sedimentary rocks called sandstone, which is a sedimentary rock. You can see the kind of get the feel that this is a, a sandy, almost feels like sandpaper. And that was laid down in the uh, shallow ocean uh, sort of thing. Uh, this is over in uh, over in uh, Western Maryland, uh, a, a, a sand quarry where the sandstone weathering back to sand. And of course, uh, me being me, I had to go play a little bit. So uh, that's the world's largest sand sand uh, box right there, folks. Um, if you want to get there, I can give you directions. So how to get there? I think our friend uh, Dick Cooper, who's in the room tonight, uh, was with me on that on that trip. There is conglomerate. Now I want you to pay attention because this is a conglomerate sedimentary rock. You see the rounded quartz pebbles. Uh, so this may have formed like where a body of water was flowing into a larger body of water and the larger body of water did not have the current to carry the weight of those pebbles and they simply got dropped down into a sandy bottom. And after the uh, stream or a river left uh, that sediment became glued together became a rock and now today is called a conglomerate and you can actually look at the roundness of the of the uh, large pebbles and say well they were moved a short distance or they were moved a pretty they came from a pretty far distance you know these are mostly well rounded so that tells us that they were moved by water for a considerable uh, distance. I can't really put my weight on it, but they were, they were in the water for a long time. Now keep that in mind because when a conglomerate goes under metam metamorphism, it becomes a metamorphic rock, it turns into meta conglomerate. And this is again a rock that's common in Baltimore County. You see that elongated white? That is a quartz pebble that got stretched by metamorphism. And uh, there's a couple of others in here on this side of the rock. Uh, so you just imagine the pressure that was exerted on this rock to actually 
take the rock, put your two hands on the rock and stretch it out. That's what Mother Nature did. Um, there's a lot of nice in Baltimore County. Uh, this is the ultimate metamorphic rock. Uh, this rock got to be so hot, so much under pressure, that the dark colored minerals uh, became, uh, it went into their own zone. Light colored minerals went into their own zones. And it now has what we call a, a, a banded effect. I don't want to call it layering because that gets into sedimentary rock. Nice is a metamorphic rock. But when you find a nice, wherever you may be, yes, it's a nice rock. I know that joke. Uh, but uh, when you find a nice, that tells the geologist that that rock was, was at its ultimate. It was just about ready to melt back in the magma and complete the rock cycle. So Baltimore County area, for some reason, and we will answer that reason, uh, the, much of the rock was altered into nice because of what happened in that area. So this is a geologic map of Baltimore County. Here is the city of Baltimore right there. And the letters stand for the class of rocks that are in in Baltimore County. M stands for metamorphic. So you have metamorphic rocks pretty much in the northern half of Baltimore County. And then you have the pattern here. You have igneous rocks showing up here and down here, actually just to the west of Baltimore. Uh, you have uh, some igneous uh, rocks similar to the port deposit uh, granite. And then sedimentary rocks are found east of Baltimore and south of Baltimore in getting into what we call the coastal plain that I showed you in an earlier slide. So predominantly a lot of metamorphic rocks, and in fact these igneous rocks uh, can, be, can be labeled as uh, meta igneous rocks also, technically speaking. Um, so geologically, on the time scale, where do these rocks fit in? Well, the, the coastal plain rocks are the youngest. Uh, out closer to the Atlantic Ocean, they belong to the Cretaceous period way up here, when dinosaurs were just about ready to come to an end when the, when the asteroid uh, struck the Yucatan uh, to put the dinosaurs out of business. And then the rest of the rocks are are fairly old, uh, starting starting up here. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. I have to, uh, they all belong to, uh, most of them belong to the Precambrian down here at the bottom. So the Cockeysville Formation, we call it the Sutter's Formation, the Baltimore Mafix, which are the igneous rocks, and the Baltimore Nice are all down here. And then there's a series of metamorphic rocks, mostly a rock called schist that you'll see in a second, belong to uh, uh, what, what was called the Glen Arm series. This is probably now this uh, Glen Arm series is not being printed as much as it did in the old days, but the early geologists called uh, a group of formations uh, the Glen Arm series. Uh, but uh, as I said, that term's not being used as much in literature as it had been. But they're a little bit younger. They're in the Cambrian and early Ordovician period, you know, 500 to 460 million years ago, for example. So we're going to take a look at some of these rocks. Here's the Baltimore Nice. I want you to keep this in your mind because this plays a big role in what's so cool about it when we get to the geologic history. These are the ones that are 1.1 billion years old. And they've been through metamorphism uh, several times that we know about. If you want to see good exposures of these, walk the uh, Gunpowder Falls uh, trail uh, around Moncton, Maryland, and uh, you will see. That, in fact, this this uh, exposure is just north of Moncton. Uh, you can see the nice. It's pretty uh, dramatic. The quartz diorite. This is the uh, this is the equivalent of the port deposit granite. Uh, as you see, it's igneous. It was an intrusive. It formed inside the earth 
crystals are large enough you can actually see um, the feldspars and in this case there's some horn blend in here there's a little bit of mica and of course a lot of a lot of quartz but these intruded up through older rocks as in the uh the nice uh the ultramafic if you see the word ultramafic uh that usually means a rock called serpentinite which is an igneous rock has a lot of serpentine in it that's what gives it the green color what we call the rock the serpentinite again this is an intrusive rock uh came up through existing rock again at the geologic history section you'll see how this fit in this this has a good home uh, for the geologic history. Where you have the ultramafics or the serpentinite, uh, you can actually uh, tell what rock is under your feet when you see what's called the barrens. Uh, my, ba my background tonight is a barren over in Lancaster County. Uh, this is the Soldier's Delight Barrens, uh, which is actually in Baltimore County in the western part over near Owings Mill. It's a great great uh, state park to go visit and a uh, great example of what a barren is a barren is a area that only might have four species of plants growing because of the chemistry of the soil from the serpentinite will only allow a very very limited number of, of plants to grow uh, the center formation uh, is uh, mostly a quartzite that's a metamorphosed sandstone uh this this uh, exposure again is along the gunpowder falls uh trail and this is a picture of the quartzite if you look at closely you can actually see glimmers of crystals uh, quartzite is a is a coarse grained uh metamorphic rock so you can actually see you know crystals in it but again, it's just telling us that there's a lot of metamorphism that happened in Baltimore County. Uh, the Mafic Rock. Okay, this is actually a rock called Gabbro. You may have never heard of Gabbro. It's very similar to the composition of a basalt, except Gabbro is intrusive. It did form inside the earth. That means that you guess you might be able to see some crystal structure if you had this rock in your hand. But it was called the part of what's called the Baltimore Mafic Complex Intrusions of Gabbro. So there's three rocks right there I just gave you that intruded up through uh, rocks of what was formerly called the Glen Arm Series rocks. Uh, the Cockeysville Marble. Okay, marble is a metamorphic rock. It metamorphosed from limestone. And again, coarse grained. Remember, uh, metamorphic rocks, uh, you know, so, some of them are uh, coarse grained. So this is a cal this is calcite rich. So if you have a muriatic acid or a good vinegar with you, you can make this fizz uh, sort of thing. And this is down around, uh, of course, Cockeysville, Maryland, is where the Cockeysville marble was named such a lot of the Glenwarm series rocks and particularly the, the metamorphic rocks that are in the northern part of Baltimore County are what we call schist okay schist is a metamorphic rock again <laughs> it came it metamorphosed from usually a shale or maybe a sandstone and it turned into a schist because the in a shale the clay within the shale uh, changed to the mineral called mica. And you see these shiny sp spots in the schist. Those are little crystals of mica. Okay, and not you cannot use the, uh, you cannot use the, if you find mica in a rock, that's automatically a schist. Now, there, are, there is mica in some other rocks, but uh, predominantly when you see a lot of mica, chances are you are looking at a schist. And actually, the one on the right is called garnet schist. These are garnet crystals within the schist, so it's called a garnet schist. This is also from Baltimore County. So lots of schist going on in Baltimore County. Again, another 
metamorphic rock, if you get in my get in my drift here. So here's the uh, here's the schist again along the Gunpowder Falls uh, trail, which is a, by the way a hiking and bike riding trail. Uh, goes uh, 24 miles from the Mason Dixon line near New Freedom, Pennsylvania, down uh, to Cockeysville. If you look at this shift, you you can also see that there's some folding within the rock. It's been folded a little bit. Now, a couple of views of geological maps. This is the northern part of Baltimore County. Uh, this is the Cockeys. This is the uh, the Gunpowder Falls uh, Trail. I've been talking about coming down through Parkton. But all this up here is schist. So if you're riding the trail, if you're right, if you're on 83, uh, 83 down to below Parkton, if you're looking at the road cuts, you're looking at a schist of some sort. It could be garnet rich. It could be just mica, a lot of mica uh, there, but uh, that's a schist. This is down uh, close to uh, Randall's town in the southwestern part of the uh, Baltimore County, uh, Ellicott City. Uh, this is the this is the uh, the granite diorite, uh, which is I kept saying the port deposit. The UM that is the ultramafics. Remember the green rock with a serpentine. The, these are those intrusions, uh, and uh, th this is the this color is the what's called the Baltimore nice, that nice rock. Okay. Uh, so you can see it's pretty complicated, uh, in the, particularly in the southern part of Baltimore County. Uh, a lot of disturbance, a lot of pushing and shoving has happened. And one more, uh, this is the Lock Raven Reservoir. Callison is right here. Baltimore will be down to the lower left. Again, we have uh, Schist, the brown. This is the... Uh, this is the Balmer Nice again. Uh, if you look at the old literature, they talk about the fact the article that was that was inserted in your email this week. I, I, I put out there for you to read. This is the rock. It's, it's basically talking about the Balmer Nice, 1.1 billion year old rocks, and these are domed up. If we could actually pull it out of the ground and put it back like it was before it was weathered, it would look like a dome. So this is a dome, that's a dome. This will be a dome down here, sort of thing. So a lot of uh, disturbance going on. So I just wanna make sure you're getting the point. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Okay, mineral resources. Uh, if it isn't grown, it has to come out of the ground. We preach that a lot. Uh, well, particularly when we're visiting a quarry or a mine, uh, people will say, you know, why is this quarry has to be right here? Because I live over there. Now, it's because of the mineral resources are there. But again, if it doesn't come out of the ground, it has to be grown. That's the only options we have, folks, for getting raw materials or mineral resources uh, available to us. Hello. So, one of the major mineral resources that happened in Baltimore County. They had some uh, 19th century iron mines uh, working around the county. And this is a mineral called gothite, uh, which is one of the primary iron uh, ore minerals uh, to be found. And they were taken to local furnaces, burned and made into uh, implements, as you heard last week with our Mary Ann furnace discussion. Uh, Bear Hills, Maryland, which is kind of uh, a neat little area. Uh, first of all, this is a uh, the Cockeysville Marble Quarry over here. Uh, they were quarrying the marble. It's now, uh, of course, uh, uh, not in operation. Arendelle uh, Corporation still owns it, actually. But uh, it, it's now an abandoned quarry. It does have some minerals within the marble that are Neat to uh, to collect. Uh, Bear Hills also had a copper uh, mine to it, and you see on here it's because it's called 
calcotrichite, which is a copper mineral. Uh, it's actually a variety of cuprite. Uh, cuprite. This is a cuprite fibrous uh, addition of it called calcotrichite. And this is calcopyrite, which is iron and copper mixed together. So at Bears Hill, Bear Hills anyway, there is uh, some collecting opportunity there at the old, old mine of what's left of it anyway. Other mineral resources within the area in Baltimore County. We're going to look at chromite here just a little bit closer in a second. And serpentine. We talked about serpentine being in the ultramafic rock. And serpentine was actually quarried, of course, to uh, use for asbestos uh, activity years ago. Uh, we're going to visit Oregon Ridge County Park. This is right off of 83, uh, below Cockeysville. Again, this is a really a neat park. You'll see a pond here. Actually, it's a lake. That was an old uh, an old iron mine there because on the property of Oregon Ridge County Park, there was a furnace, iron furnace, sitting right here. And through the uh, work of a... Uh, of a now retired archaeologist. He and uh, many volunteers over the years did archaeology at Oregon Ridge. Uh, they put, they were able to put this map together. Some of these uh, buildings are still standing. The ones in red, I think, are, are still there. The foundations are still there. Uh, and the ones in black are uh, believed to have been right there. So the forge was here, the spring house along the road the graveyard uh, of course is still visible way over here so there was a little village within oregon ridge county park where the furnace workers and their families uh, lived and that story is tell told very well at oregon ridge um nearby ashland furnace actually the gunpowder falls uh trail stops in ashland and if you would actually walk back over the hill from the trail you cannot see this on the trail but there was a large complex of iron furnaces at ashland actually much of our iron ore that came out of southern york county was transferred down the northern central railroad um, to ashland to be used i think there was uh, five furnaces working at one time and the village of ashland uh still has this this was the uh this was the store Actually, in the store at one time, some of the a couple of the houses are still standing uh, in Ashland. So, uh, again, historically, that's a pretty neat place to go to. Also, in Baltimore County, to operate a furnace. If you remember this from last week, if you were with us last week, furnace needed iron ore, limestone, and charcoal to, to for it to work. All three ingredients were usually very close by where a furnace was built. As in the case of uh, Oregon Ridge, they had the iron ore there, they had limestone as bedrock, and the, uh, the charcoal, of course, came from the forest. Chromite, I brought this up a couple minutes ago. Chromite is a very rare uh, ore in the country. It was, and it still is, a very, very rare ore to get the chrome. But you know what? The first chrome uh, mineral resource in the whole country occurred in Baltimore County. Um, and that was right around Holbrook. Um, in fact, our friend, uh, sometimes in here, Johnny Johnson, uh, does a great program uh, on the uh, serpentine deposits in uh, Maryland and, of course, a little bit in southern Pennsylvania and Lancaster County and Chester County. But around Holbrook is where Mr. Tyson found the first chromite deposits. And these are all chromite mines in the serpentine uh, rock. This is also, you see the word Soldier's Delight. This is where the Soldier's Delight uh, State Park is located that I told you about earlier. And speaking of Johnny Johnson, there he is on his semi-annual tour to the Chilcote Mine, which is in Soldier's Delight. Johnny does a, a, a Sunday public walk uh, twice a year, 
and uh, takes you up to the mine sites and talks about uh, the chromite ore, how it was mined. Um, it's a real good walk. I've been on it several times. So uh, check that out with their website if you're interested in going. It's usually like April and October, I believe, is when the uh, programs are held. In southern uh, Lancaster County and Chester County, again, the green is the serpentinite rock where you find the chrome and you see all the prospects in southern Lancaster County and into Chester County over here. And of course, they, they extend into Maryland uh, below rising sun. Uh, some gold is found in Maryland, a uh, sort of thing. And uh, uh, you can actually find some gold related to the chromite deposits. Ignore this message on the left hand side. That's, a, that's an older one. Uh, but uh, uh, there is some gold in Maryland uh, associated with the chromite deposits. So if you're paying for chromite, you may find gold associated there. Speaking of that, in Maryland, just again, uh, extra credit information. These are all the gold mines that occurred in Maryland. Uh, basically, on the uh, you know in, in Baltimore County is here, so we had several. We had one uh, gold mine, uh, two in uh, two mines in Baltimore County. Uh, many of them were down uh, along the Potomac River, but uh, Maryland was very profitable in in gold resources. The fact there was gold being um, mined and panned. Uh, in Maryland up into the early 1940s, just prior to World War II. Uh, big concentration of them, as I said, are along the Potomac River, Falls Road, Montgomery County. Uh, but again, you see where all the gold mines were. Um, very, very close actually to the uh, National Capitol building. And uh, the largest one was called the uh, the Maryland uh, gold mine, uh, which is, I think, uh, right in here, which is now part of the uh, state park land along the Potomac. And you see the graph down here, 1940, you know, over a thousand troy ounces were taken out of Maryland that year. And just for uh, something cool, uh, the Levi Strauss jeans. Uh, actually, where the material was first used for the 1849 gold rush to Centers Mill, California. And uh, they used it for tents. And the uh, prospector said, man, this material is so good for tents. Why didn't you make jeans out of this stuff? And they started to, and it's the early part of uh, Levi Strauss jeans, sold on eBay for $46,000. Incredible. Okay, mineral resources. This is called the Texas Quarry down in Cockeysville. Again, if you're familiar with Interstate 83, you go right past it, uh, just above the Cockeysville exit, and it's a very, it's a huge quarry. You really can't see the, the quarry very well from 83, though. They have, they have a tendency to hide things like that on you. But they do have some mounds and berms. Uh, built here, so you really can't see much of it. But uh, I think they they had been given some tours. Uh, I'm not sure about any right now with the COVID. But this particular Texas quarry was famous for a reason, because some of the some of the Washington Monument, two thirds of the Washington Monument is made out of Cockeysville marble. It, it came out of the Texas quarry. So. Uh, the Texas marble, that's actually Texas as in the state. And the Sheffield marble, which uh, came from Indiana, I believe, very small section when they had to stop construction. And the rest of it, Cockeysville marble. So next time you go to the DC and you want to go up to the Washington Monument, check, try to find that little seam. And everything above there is uh, Cockeysville marble. Okay couple words on fossils. Obviously, we don't find fossils 
very rarely in metamorphic rocks and more rarely in igneous rocks. So fossils obviously within Baltimore County are, are pretty rare if they're not, if they're just not totally don't exist. But this is the Maryland fossil itself, Ecporia. It's a uh, gastropod uh, that is their official state fossil of Pennsylvania. You see the age on it, 3 million years. Our state fossil is 485 million years old. So uh, this is actually a fossil found out in the coastal plain. Remember that physiographic province. You'll see it again soon. Uh, they actually do have a, an official dinosaur of Maryland, <laughs> and it's called the Astrodon Johnston I. Okay, and it's about 30 feet high, 50 to 60 feet long. Uh, these are some of the teeth uh, drawn. Um, some of these critter, critters were found over near Emmitsburg, Maryland. And uh, in fact, they've only have found uh, only several specimens. They are not plentiful, folks. But uh, Maryland decided to make this their official dinosaur. So uh, anybody ever ever asked you that on a quiz? Astrodon Johnson I is the uh, dinosaur of Maryland. That's in our fossils into the geologic history section. And we're going to uh, start at a good, sp good spot at the beginning uh, for now, OK? But uh, if you're veterans to the room, you might recall the word Rodinia, the supercontinent a billion years ago, uh, forming closer to the South Pole than, than the, to the equator. And all the continents were pretty much locked together in a supercontinent way before Pangaea. But Rodinia, you see the age, 1.1 billion years ago. If you've been following me with the ages, the Baltimore Nice. Remember the ones that made up the domes in Baltimore County are 1.1 billion years old. So what that Nice was is the was the bedrock of our of our continent, then called Laurentia. Laurentia. So the rocks we're seeing in Baltimore County, the Nice, that was actually the bedrock of Laurentia. And it's now been broken and displaced and uh, put in put in uh, into our crust in Baltimore County. So here is Laurentia, and uh, we are moving north. We've also rotated a little bit during the middle or division period, like 480 million years ago. Um, here's the equator. Here's Laurentia. That's us. Okay. And you'll see that there are volcanic islands off the coast. This is a subduction zone. Remember what a subduction zone is, where one plate is going beneath another plate, and on the uh, the one the side that's uh, not being subducted, you get volcanic activity in these arcs. And then we had other pieces of crust out here in the middle of the uh, Rennick Ocean at this point. The Iaptus was here, the Rennick Ocean was here, and the the Attic Ocean was way off the coast. But anyway, subduction zone, volcanic arc, I want you to keep that in mind too. And uh, here we are, this is the early Ordovician, but I, this, this cross section is really uh, important. Move my stuff out of the way so I can see. Um, is that uh, this is what was going on. We had a subduction zone. Here we are here, Laurentia, the volcanoes, right? And uh, the automatics, the serpentine rocks that we show you, the green ones, we know they were forming very deep within the subduction zone. They were very, very deep underneath the volcanic islands. Uh, so that was part of like the magma chamber of supplying the uh, magma to the volcanoes. So this is a very deep seated rock. So if you collect any serp serpentinite or serpentine from Southeast Pennsylvania or uh, Maryland, this rock came from very, very deep, uh, either the very lower crust 
or even the upper mantle in a subduction zone. And the gabbro, the other uh, intrusive rock I talked about, was certainly in the midst of the magma chamber of the volcanoes. So a little bit earlier now, we're again uh, approaching the equator 360 million years ago, 300 million years ago. We're getting very close to the equator as in Pennsylvania. 180 million years ago, here's Pangea uh, coming together, if it's not already together. Um, and of course, when this broke open, we had the morning of the Atlantic Ocean. Atlantic was not known until Pangea broke apart. Remember, it was the, uh, the Rennick and the Iapetus Oceans. Um, are there any of these rocks telling the story in Baltimore County at this point? No. This happened uh, way younger than the rocks in Baltimore County. So if we look at my little time scale graph here. We had Rodinia uh, down there about 1.1 billion years ago. Rodinia split up, started to move uh, Laurentia in the northern part. We had the ocean uh, environment and the building of a Connell shelf, primarily actually in uh in york york and lancaster county is chester county is where the Connell shelf was being built uh baltimore county uh and into southeast pennsylvania was basically the ocean environment of uh, the volcanic islands that i just showed you on the uh, near the subduction zone they collided with eastern coast of laurentia uh, about this time, 440 million years ago or so, attached themselves Arn. Here's the collision of Pangaea happening during what's called the Permian period, say around uh, 280, 270 million years ago. And then uh, the split up of Pangaea happened during the uh, Triassic period into the Jurassic, actually. And then we had the extensive weathering erosion where uh, even in, down in Maryland, weathering erosion was very extensive. A lot of uh, movement of sediment. That's what built our present day continental shelf off the coast of North America today or into the uh, Susquehanna River, Chesapeake Bay uh, areas. And of course, finally, the Ice Age, as we have already told you, the Ice Age did not affect anything even in southeast Pennsylvania, except for the amount of uh, meltwater coming down the Susquehanna. Uh, so no glacial evidence at all in Baltimore County. Um, I thought this was pretty good. If you can read this, roll me over. So we actually saw that on a truck one day. I had to get, get a picture of it. And uh, this is a complexity of uh, the geologic history is that if you look at this, this is actually a schist. Remember, a schist has mica in it, a lot of mica in it. If you look at this rock, you might be able to tell there's two directions of lines going through the rock. Okay, I'm giving you a second to pick one. No, pick them out. One is pretty obvious. The other one's a little, a little harder to see. Here we go. One direction is that direction, obviously. And there's the other direction. What this rock is telling us is that this schist has been through two stages of metamorphism, two events. Okay, the, the pressures that exerted on this rock to produce the lines running this way occurred first. Okay, that was actually that was the coming together of the volcanic islands onto our east coast. This rock was deformed, metamorphosed during that stage. Later on, when Pangaea came together and Africa and North America collided, that metamorphism created the lines that go this direction. They overprinted the older lines of metamorphism. Just like me walking through a snowstorm, 
I'm putting my foot down in the snow. It's well preserved, but you're following me and you're stepping in my same footprints. You're destroying the evidence. So this rock is a, a great example of the complexity of, of the geology, uh, particularly in, in uh, Baltimore County, because uh, we have to figure out uh, what belongs to who sort of thing, right? Uh, folding in the schist. There was a lot of, a lot of pressure actually remelted this rock into a semi-done jello with deep burial. There's been some work done in some rocks in southeast Pennsylvania where uh, geologists have calculated that some of these rocks were buried eight to nine miles beneath the surface and went under metamorphism and now they're at the surface because of uplift or and or uh, weathering and erosion. Dr. Wise, who used to be at Franklin Marshall College, uh, put this neat thing together here. Red box is Baltimore County, relatively speaking. And uh, you'll see what we call all these different colors are terrains. You see the coastal plain out here. You know, that, that's, that's much, much younger rock than what we've been talking about. You see the word here says uh, uh, the James Run Volcanics. Okay, that's the volcanic island arc rocks passing through this part of uh, Maryland. And of course, off the map. Here's the Baltimore Mayfield complex. That's the, the Gabbro and also the Serpentinites. Over here in Baltimore County, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Phoenix Mayfield, that's another word. Uh, that's the Gabbro, that's the, uh, the Nice. Okay, that's the Nice, 1.1 billion year old rocks it used to belong to Rodinia. And when you see a major fault here called the Pleasant Grove Shear Zone, zone it uh, kind of, we think, uh, runs into the Drewmore uh, Shear Zone, going further into uh, Lancaster and Chester County. So you see these terrains. The Westminster terrain was an ocean environment that collided with North America, the Potomac terrain collided with North America, actually with uh, Laurentia, I shouldn't be using. The volcanic islands I told you about, these are intrusives, port deposit, granite, and the uh, other intrusives there. So pretty complex. Just looking at that little picture, and I'm not even touching what's up here in the middle part of the map, because that's a whole different geologic history there. Okay, finally, we talk about the coastal plain area, okay? And the fall line is the border between the coastal plain and the Piedmont. Piedmont is made up of sediment, not true rock. If it's a rock, it's very, very soft. It's a, I call it a wannabe rock. And of course, the rocks of the Piedmont, as we just saw, are are a uh, are rock rock, very hard rocks, okay? So along the fall line between the Piedmont and the coastal plain, any drainage coming off the Piedmont is falling into the coastal plain because the coastal plain is uh, lower and it does, uh, it, you know, it's softer crust. So along the fall line, the whole way actually up and down the the uh, east coast down to Georgia, you get dramatic waterfalls. Okay, as you have the, the picture here, here's the Blue Ridge Mountains, the Piedmont, there's the fall line, and down into the coastal plain. So the local great example, of course, is the Great Falls on the Potomac River. Um, great example, this is the fall line of where the, of where the two uh, come together. Uh, we don't see that in Maryland, Maryland on the Susquehanna River because of the Chesapeake Bay. The fall line basically goes through the Chesapeake Bay, and we don't really have dramatic falls uh, per se. So that's the definition of a, the fall line. And just uh, again, inter uh, interestingly enough, 
there have been some earthquakes in Maryland that have uh, have occurred on the fall line deep in the uh, into the crust. This is the basement rock. This is the metamorphic rocks and the igneous rocks that we just covered. And this is all younger sediment. And uh, there are occasional earthquakes that happen right along this zone. Somebody is shifting. You know, it could be the sediment shifting from the weight over their heads, or it could be the basement rock itself shifting because of the weight of the sediment rock, you know, the sedimentary rocks. And finally, we've talked about this before too, the Chesapeake Bay impact crater uh, 35 million years ago uh, did impact into the bay down at Cape Charles area. The Chesapeake Bay is here, so it wasn't too far from Baltimore County. Uh, we really know that it did change a lot of things in our neck of the woods. Even up into Pennsylvania, the impact had to be uh, had to be felt, and uh, even some of our rocks may have been altered because of this impact. If it was a comet, an asteroid, they are drilling uh, into what they are hoping to find, the, the uh, culprit, find out if it was an asteroid or a comet that happened 35 million years ago. So I end with a sun... That's a sunset, and I thank you for listening tonight. So uh, I'll stop sharing, get back to you all. Uh, I'm just reading, a, does anyone know which of the trails at Soldier's Delight leads to the rock outcrop shown on the photo? I'm talking about the, you're talking about the mine, Chilcote mine. Uh, that's from Ken. Uh, I don't know the names of the trails. I know the Chilcote mine is on the other side of the road from where the visitor center is. That, that might be the only trail on that side of the road that goes back there. About a quarter of a mile off the road is where you find the Chilcote. I'm just checking. I don't think Johnny Johnson is in the room tonight to answer that. So, uh, anyway, that's about Baltimore County sort of thing. Anybody have any questions or whatever? You ready to go to Baltimore County? I know Andrew's, uh, Andrew told me he grew up in Baltimore County. That's why he did the uh, intro video they did tonight with horseback riding because he did that. And, uh, I grew up looking for Indian bowls and arrowheads all over Blue Mount uh, in Moncton. Uh, I knew the rocks that you were uh, describing along the bike and hike trail. Uh, I've ridden by them as a kid. Uh, yes, uh, I also know plenty of streams that are lined with garnets, uh, yeah. just in the bar, almondine garnets, just because of that zone that, you know, love it. Yep. There's geology everywhere. I hate to tell you all that, but you know, <laughs> boy, I called heck for my wife this week. She said, will you stop impersonating a flamingo? So I had to put my foot down. Oh, boy. that's a good one. <laughs> hey, Steven, welcome back. I didn't see you there earlier, but uh, we walking you back into the room tonight. Yeah, I missed the last two weeks. We were away, and uh, yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah, Thanks. There is, there is a pay cut in your check coming to you, by the way. Yeah, too. well, I, I kind of expected that, but that's all right. Hey, wonderful program tonight. That's some uh, interesting, complicated geology down there. It is. It's uh, yeah, yeah. I leave that to the uh, uh, I leave that to the metamorphic guys. <laughs> I stay I stay away from that stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't blame you there on that one. <laughs> Yep, you're, you're exactly right. Um, you hear about the man who fell into the uh, upholstery machine? He's fully recovered. That's good news that he, he wasn't injured. 
one last story about the Baltimore, Pennsylvania thing. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I didn't bring it up tonight in the program, but uh, I did a program for the Geological Society of America a few years ago at one of their conferences on the, the biking trail. Because it's really cool if you uh, if you use the York County Rail Trail from York down to the Maryland line, and then there's the Maryland uh, Trail locks right into ours. Uh, you can go forty you can go forty two miles on a trail one direction one direction. But the geology, uh, you basically come off the you're in the Connell Shelf of this ancient ocean in York area. You drop down into the ocean uh, in southern York County and uh, Maryland, and you, you actually see some uh, volcanic rocks in York County that are like the ones I showed you at Gilpin Falls, the basalt, the uh, mid oceanic ridge. You get into Maryland, you're, you're, you're totally in the ocean sediment rock. And then you get into the domes with the uh, the nice, which is the ancient rock of um, Rodinia, at the end of their trail, and so you can you can you can do that bike ride, forty one miles, and look at the geology. Uh, Connell Shelf Ocean, some mid uh, mid oceanic uh, volcanic rocks in the middle of the ocean, and then uh, and then visit uh, Laurentia. So that's that's kind of neat. But anyway, my point here is that. The metamorphic the schist I showed you uh, in the Maryland, that formation is called the Wissahickon formation. That really is the old formation for for what we know of in Pennsylvania. But in Pennsylvania, uh, that is now called, and I think actually it's getting ready to change officially. Right now, we call the same rock in Pennsylvania the Octorora formation. So if you look at a geological map of, say, York and Baltimore County, the metamorphic rocks, the schists in York County are Octorora formation. But as soon as you go across the Mason Dixon line, you're in the Wissahickon. Because they refuse to work together and make it all the same name. Okay. And I really, I really talked to the Maryland Geologic Survey when I was doing setting up this program, said, you know, why. Why is it that way? Why can't we just make it all the the octoroar or whatever? So they haven't accepted that thing yet. So when you cross boundaries, sometimes you have to be aware of where you are or, or what's going on. All right. Um, so again, I challenge you for uh, challenge you to uh, bring a friend into the room. If you do bring a friend in and they stay more than a week, uh, we'll give you a free membership into the Zoom Rock Room. <laughs> oh, uh, that, okay, that won't work either. Okay, but uh, yeah, pass the word around, and we we appreciate. I'm not sure how the uh, how the one in uh, Sunday came about at the uh, Rock and Mineral Picnic, but uh, we we have them on our list too. Don't forget Saturday night, come to Sweet Arrow Lake and uh, see the dinosaurs running around the park. Or uh, you might see a splash from Brittany diving into the lake. Yep, she does a great swan dive. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, it's been a great uh, night. We're gonna, you know, it's been videoed, so we're gonna have it on our website tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, you want to tell your friends about it? And I, oh yeah, I do want to also say I we had a couple of comments this past week from uh, you folks thanking us for the uh, room and. Uh, being a part of it, it's all really up to you guys because you you're the ones that made it possible. So uh, thank you. I'm gonna pass it to Brittany. She can she can uh, end this. Well, it's good to see everyone, and thank you, Andrew, for sharing such um, a personal and lovely story with us all. We appreciate all three of your main geology series. So thanks for that. I hope everyone has a good week, and we'll see you next week. Hey y'all.